Hey y'all, how y'all doing? So today I want to talk to you about how to set goals for yourself using your solar return chart. Um, so as a quick review, your solar return chart is an astrological chart that is cast for the exact moment that the transiting sun returns to the exact position it was during your uh, at the time of your birth. Um, this is a video that I wanted to do uh, last month around my birthday, but uh, I got a cold. I wasn't feeling well, and it took me a while to get over it, and so I'm doing it now. But I'm going to be using my own chart as a reference, but because I am using my own chart, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys now, I'm going to be a little bit vague about um, exact degrees. I might tell you where, you know, sign a planet it is in, but I'm, I'm not going to get into... Um, specifics because I don't want to give away too much information about my chart. Um, so we're going to be focusing on three or four things here. Uh, the first thing we're going to be focusing on is your big three. So for those of you who don't know, when an astrologer or anybody in astrology talks about their big three, they're talking about their ascendant, they're talking about their sun sign, and they're talking about their moon sign. So the first thing I want to talk about is these three things about how to set your goals. The ascendant is a little tricky, so I'm going to start with the sun. So in my um, solar return chart, I have the sun in Virgo, because I am a Virgo, and the second house. So what you want to do is, you know, you would normally interpret that for, you know, divination purposes. So let's look at our keywords or our mantras for these um elements of the of the chart so the sun is i am virgo is i analyze and the second house represents your um money material matters personal values which may not which isn't always something very material so when you take those keywords string them together you get i am i analyze money, material value, material matters, personal values. And then that's writing. That's what we call writing. And then we're going to edit that, right? So let's edit that and make it a little bit more clear. So you might say, I am analyzing my resources, right? So that's your beginning of a goal right there. So instead of, that could be a mantra for you for the year, but that could be also a goal. So you want to turn that into a goal to work with the uh, universal energies rather than work against them. So with that, my, in, that in mind, you might say that one of your goals is to focus on making and having more money because having money is going to give you a sense of security. And in order to do that, you're going to, you know, Virgo is very analytical, but they also want to be more efficient. So you're going to like, how can I be more efficient with my resources? That's something that here it is, a month into my birthday, I am looking at uh, how to, you know, make my money work for me a little bit better. Um, also with Virgo, uh, that tells me that you can make money being of service to others. Well, I haven't really said anything on my uh, YouTube channel yet, but probably back in July or August, I finally decided to start an Etsy store. It's 12th House Books on Etsy, and... Uh, it's been very, very successful so far, so please go check that out. Um, what I do is, uh, as you all who follow me on Instagram or Facebook know, is I like to go around to the thrift stores, and I find some really good stuff, rare books, unusual books, and I would post my book haul on Instagram, and what would happen is people would slide into my DMs and make me offers for those books. So I have all these books right here all these books right here these are all my journals that i have an obsession with and i have three or four more bookcases like this in my little two-bedroom apartment and i said you know this is getting to be a lot of books and i love books but i can't possibly keep all these or i don't need all these so i started to sell the books online and sometimes when i go to the resource let's say if i already own this book i might I know the value of it, so I'll buy another copy to sell. Sometimes when I buy books, I'll buy two copies. I'll buy one copy to keep and one copy to write in, highlight, annotate, what have you. 
So anyway, I'm getting off track here. This just goes to show you that we're, a, you know, a little over a month into my solar return and um, it's sort of unfolding and I'm working with that energy. So I am being of service to others uh, because I'm, I'm bringing something that other people value, that I value, and that, that people want. Uh, in addition to my Etsy store, I have a large network of friends who are uh, business owners and academics and writers who are very interested in specific subjects. So sometimes when I find um, certain books on certain subjects in the stores, I will give them the first option to purchase the, those books from me before I put them up on Etsy. So I have a list of people, specific books they're interested in, specific topics they're interested in, specific authors they're interested in on my cell phone. And when I'm out there looking, I check for these books. Okay, so that's one goal. Organize my resources to make more money for me, make my money work for me, and being of service to others, okay? So now let's look at the moon. So just like we did before, I have the moon in Taurus in the 10th house. So the moon is I feel, Taurus is I have, and the 10th house is sort of the public sector of your chart. It's your career, uh, people who are your bosses, your mentors. It's how the public views you. So we'll string those together and you might say, I feel the need to have, sometimes you have to stick a word in there between I feel and to have. I feel the need to have more ambition because the tenth house is about your career trajectory. Um, and I'm going to get off on a tangent, not a tangent, a tributary as Judge Judy calls it here real quick to explain something to you. I've had people ask me, what's the difference between the source, the sixth house employment job and the tenth house career? And you have to think in terms of short term, long term. Think of um, a young person who works at McDonald's, right? That's their job. But they, 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 at nighttime, they go to law school and in time they, they, graduate, they become a lawyer, they become successful. That's the difference between job and career. McDonald's in the present is their job, what they do to get by, but they're investing in their self and their education for a career, that 10th house energy. Um, and it goes more toward ambition. I always think of 10th houses like yuppies, you know, climbing that ladder of success and wanting to have status, okay? Again, I got off on a little tributary there. So, I feel the need to have more ambition. You know what? In my life, I have always sort of gone where the universe has taken me. I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm a perfect employee in every job. I've been fired from several jobs. Um, some of those firings were warranted. Others were not. But, you know, I've just sort of, okay, I worked here. Now I work there. Just, you know. And... Some I never really developed that sense to know when things were coming to an end because I get a little comfortable with where I'm at. And even though you, I could see the writing on the wall, I wouldn't, you know what? This job's coming to an end. Either I'm going to get fired or I'm going to quit. And I need to start looking for something else. I never really developed that good sense that I should develop. So I need to, I, I feel like I need to be a little bit more ambitious. I just turned 49 last month. I'll be 50 next year. I need to be a little bit more ambitious about um, my passions and things of that nature. Um, so I might say, you know, I'm determined to advance in life, to have more success, more prestige, more status, and a higher reputation. And I'm willing to be patient and work hard to achieve it. So that goes back to my Etsy store. That's one of my, um, you know, I want to have a good reputation. That's what I've been telling people, and I'm just realizing this now. Um, with the Etsy store, I am lucky that I have a set schedule. So I work in the mornings, I'm off in the afternoon. So if someone buys something today, boom, I can ship it tomorrow. That's the number one thing that a lot of my customers on my Etsy have been, wow, fast shipping, wow, I got that so quick, wow, great communication. And so I am trying to build that reputation so that people come back to me again and again and again. All right, so let's go back to, okay, now the Ascendant. A lot of people look at the Ascendant different ways. Some people say the Ascendant is people's um, first impression to you, to you. Excuse me, I'm about to burp. I thought I was. Some people say the Ascendant is um, 
the first impression you give. Other people say it's a mask you wear. So I tend to go with sort of the first impression type thing. Um, so in my transit chart, I have the uh, ascendant is in Leo. And in my that lines up with the 10th house in my birth chart. And for those of you who are really quick at that, that means I am a Scorpio rising. So what this tells me with my ascendant being in the 10th house in my birth chart, first house in the transit chart, that tells me that 10th house issues are going to be prominent in my life in this solar year from birthday to birthday. And again, I kind of said earlier, 10th house is all about reputation, dealing with the public, career trajectory, um, bosses, mentors, things of that nature. Um, so let's look at our keywords. So Leo is I will, and uh, the ascendant is sort of your first impression and the 10th house is your public image, career trajectory. So when we throw that into the blender of our mind and spin it around and we're gonna spit it back out, it becomes, I willingly create my public image and issues related to career, ambition, public image and profession are gonna be more important for me this year. So yes, I am, cre I am being a little bit more conscious about my um, public image. And when I say that, I don't just mean in terms of the Etsy store and what I post on Facebook and Instagram. I mean, when I go into work, I work in customer service and I'm going to be honest with you. It's not the greatest, um, position for me because I have Mars in the seventh house in my natal chart, which I recently learned me can translate to, um, having a lot of difficulty dealing with other people. I've always read it in terms of relationships, of being, you know, I'm the type of person in a relationship, this is why I can't get a man. If a man's not doing what I want, I'll do things to piss him off, to get him to be a little bit more aggressive, because I like aggressive guys. But again, y'all don't want to picture that. I don't even want to picture that, so don't think about it. So those are three goals right there. I am um, organizing my resources to make my money work for me. Uh, to make my money go further, to make my money last longer. I am feeling the need to be more ambitious. And three, I am willingly creating my public image to project um, not necessarily what I am, but what I want to be so that I can grow into that image. You know, that whole law of attraction of if you think it, it will come. Another thing, you know, you want to look at is, you want to look at it as aspects in your chart. Now, Let's go back a minute. What I just did with the uh, big three, you could do that with every planet. Turn every planet into a goal. Let's say if, you know, this year you've been alone and you're ready for a relationship. Where is your Venus? What sign is it in? What house is it in? Write that goal, you know, write that statement and turn that statement into a goal. Turn that goal into a mantra. Think it and become it. Um, you know, another thing, oh, like I said, Aspects, um, I have the sun trying the moon, and that tells me that emotional life is going to be very harmonious, and there's a feeling of peace. Relationships are easier to develop and maintain. I have had a little bit more peace this past month. Um, the moon is square my ascendant, and that says you can become overwhelmed by your own emotions. Actions without thought should be avoided. And again, that goes back to my... Um, willingly creating my public image. I'm learning to think a little bit more before I speak, which at 49 years old, I probably should have mastered that by now, but you know, we're all works in progress. The other thing I like to look at is among my big three, I like to look at what element I'm uh, lacking. So sun in Virgo, Leo rising, moon in Taurus, that is earth, fire, and earth. So what I am lacking is air and water. So this year, I would like to probably pull in more air energy and more water energy in order to achieve a little bit more balance. One thing I love to do, it just turned cold here, but every day I come home from work, I like to open up my windows and let the breeze blow through my house. I burn incense. I love the color yellow. Um, I try to put it 
you know, in my house in certain spots and things. I have a little ceramic pitcher in the window over my sink where I do dishes, which is water. Um, and I, you know, I focus on that. It just makes me feel happy uh, with pulling in water energy. I love to take, um, I, I take a shower every morning, but uh, I have a very physically active job. So there's many nights I'll come home and I'll draw myself a hot bath and relax in the bath and just, you know, get that water element in. That helps me feel a little bit more balanced. But anyway, this is my video on using your solar return chart to set goals for the year. Those are my goals. Let's look at your chart. Tell me what your goals are in terms of your astrological chart. And anyway, I hope you all like this video and I hope to be making a lot more. Going back to my Etsy, which I'm sure you're all sick of hearing about, I'm gonna put a link in the description so you can go over there and buy some stuff, okay? Cause I need money. <laughs> Not that bad, but everybody needs money, right? Goodbye.